Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys the best export settings you can use on Premiere Pro when you're trying to make a video and export it for YouTube. Now, I've been using Premiere Pro for quite some time now, and honestly, I think my videos, even though they're 1080p, I think they generally look pretty good. Uh, now, I've been using settings that a lot of other people use, so this is a very common thing to use on YouTube when you're trying to export your videos and make them look as good as possible. Now, if you don't use the right settings when you export, your videos could be glitchy or blurry or lower quality or otherwise degraded from the quality that the camera actually captured. So it's important that you have the right settings. Now, when you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, the settings can be confusing. And that's why in this video, I'm going to go through all the different settings that I change uh, when I go and export a video, as well as all the settings that I don't change from the preset. So that way, if you ever make a mistake and accidentally bump a setting and change it, you can go back through this video and find out you know, what the settings are supposed to be so you can export it properly and have a good look video. So let's jump over to my laptop now. Okay, so here we are on my laptop, and as I said, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro in 2019. Now, if you're using this in 2020 or 2021, I doubt you're going to really have that much of a difference. Uh, if it looks way different for whatever reason, you can totally disregard this, but I think the, the settings are going to be the same that you're looking for. It's going to be the same general settings, although they might be in slightly different locations. I really don't think they will, though, because in 2017 and 2018, the settings were almost exactly where they are today. So when you have your video right here, I have one that's actually unedited. But when you're done editing the video, you can either go up and choose to uh, you go to File and down to Export and hit you know Media right there, or you can hit Control M. Uh, and essentially what you're going to do then is it's going to just take the whole video, everything you have there, uh, unless you accidentally selected a certain section, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it's, it's going to bring you to this window right here where you can change a lot about your video. Now, of course, as you see, this is a very intimidating window if you don't know enough about it. If you don't know what all these words means or these settings, uh, you could definitely screw up a lot and not know how to export your video. So to make it really simple, the first thing you want to do is go to your format and change it to H.264. That's what you want when you're uploading to YouTube. You want to make sure you're using that file format. If you're doing anything else, you know, maybe you want to use these other ones, but I always use H.264. Now, the second thing you want to do is go down and match the bitrate um, to what you actually want. Now, here it says you can match the source, which is great. If you want to do that, that'll definitely work. Uh, what I typically do is because we're uploading to YouTube, you can go down. They actually have a nice preset here, which is going to be YouTube 1080p full HD. Now, if you're, of course, using 4K, you can go and do that right here. If I choose 4K right now and my camera captured it in 1080p, it will export a 4K video, but essentially what you're doing is you're just quadrupling all the pixels that already exist, and it's, you know, it's up res to 4K, but that doesn't mean the quality, of course, is going to change. It just means the file is going to be a lot larger for no reason. So I don't recommend doing that. Instead, choose whatever the input is. So for my camera, I'm shooting most of my videos in 1080p, and therefore I want to export it in 1080p. That obviously makes a lot of sense. Then you go down to output name, and it doesn't really tell you that you can select this and change it, but if you just click on the blue part, it'll open up your folder, and you can go and put it wherever you want. Um, now, this is from my other channel right there, so if I just say I want to call it, uh, I don't know, just video, video 1, I'll do that. Typically, I choose a more specific name for these so I can find them later and know exactly what my video is. Um, but if you want to keep simple names so you can, you know, organize them by date or something, you can always add comments right there uh, so you can find out a little bit more about the video without having to watch the whole thing. Just a cool little thing you can do right there. Now, as we go down, uh, let's go into effects first. Now, effects, I don't actually change anything. As you can, I'll scroll down, you can see there's nothing selected here. These are all just whatever is already there. Um, I'm not changing anything special about this. And so, yeah, a lot there, but I didn't change anything. If you go to video, then this is where you want to first make sure that the dimensions right here are correct. If you're using a different aspect ratio, or if you're using uh, maybe like 4K or something, you're going to see different numbers right here. The dimensions are, you know, pixels by pixels. So 1920 by 1080 is what I use based on my camera. You can always just click match source right there if you have any problems. It should be really straightforward and simple to do that. Now, as you go down, you really don't have to change any of these settings, but take note of them. If yours look different, you may want to adjust them so they look like this. Generally, the YouTube 1080p preset up there should be changing all these to what you see right here. Now, the one that I do change is actually this one, the bitrate encoding. Now, I change it to VBR 2-pass. 
Um, now you can go down and do that and essentially you have these two different options right here. Now you can change them and say the maximum bit rate, you can crank that all the way up if you want or you can have it at anything in between. Generally I just bring it up higher, it's not going to really affect your file size, um, but your target bit rate is what's going to affect your file size. Now you can see right here, you can move it back and forth and it's going to change your file size, so when I let it go it's up to 600 megabytes for this one little clip I'm editing right now. Um, if I bring it all the way up, it's going to be a couple gigabytes, so right there, two gigabytes for this video. Um, you're not really going to see that much of a difference, so the preset I think is around 16. Sometimes you might want to move it up to like 20 or something, but of course you're not going to see a major difference in that. Generally, I don't even touch those to be honest, but if you want to, that's definitely something you can change. Now, this is not a VR video, I'm not going to change any advanced settings. The next thing you want to do is go over to audio, and again, in audio, I'm not changing anything because it's mostly, my videos are just me talking, so I'm not worried that much about, you know, like, the, the absolute quality and the bitrate of me talking, you know, that doesn't matter quite as much to me. If you're doing music or something, you might want to worry a little bit more about this. Next, in multiplexer here, you want to make sure it's MP4 uh, and standard, that's pretty easy to keep track of, and then captions, you don't have to do much, and publish, I don't worry about that because I'm publishing it later on YouTube um, just by uploading the video. Now, the last thing you want to do is click use maximum render quality, uh, and then you don't have to do anything else here if you don't want to, and then you just click export, and it'll export your video to the folder that you specified right here, to the name that you specified there as well. So I'm not going to export right now, I'm going to cancel, and I want to show you something else. So earlier I mentioned that you want to make sure you don't accidentally export only one part of your video, and so I kind of cut it up a little bit here just to show you if it's an edited video and you accidentally hit the letter X on your keyboard, it'll sort of highlight just one specific spot right there. Uh, and what it's, it's going to be great if you want to do anything like rendering. So if you have a lot of edits in one little area, uh, you can drag the in and the out markers and then you can go and render that area. But if you go and hit Control M or if you go up to File Export, it'll open the window and you'll see right here it's only 51 megabytes. Now remember this entire video should be 500 megabytes. The reason that you're only exporting this one little mount right there uh, is actually because you selected that with an in and an out marker. Now this is something that I struggled with when I first started using Premiere several years ago. Now what you really want to do is go up to Markers and go down and clear in and out before you export. That way you'll make sure you export the entire video every single time. So guys, if you enjoy this video, or actually if you have any other questions about this, please remember to go down and comment. Let me know, I'll try to help you guys. Of course I'm not, you know, I, I can't tell you every single answer to everything in Premiere Pro, but I have been using it for a while, so I'm going to try to help you guys as you're starting to get, you know, going with your YouTube careers here and get your channels growing. Uh, it's really important that you have the best quality when you export, um, because it's something so easy to do, why would you degrade your videos in the very last step? So. Thank you all for watching guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video, I'll see you next time.